Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's about 4.15 uh, after the close on October 10th, 2012. Uh, this video is being brought to you by SP500Chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 Index. Interesting day today. And uh, before we take a look at it, I just need to remind you, as is always the case, the website and this video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional, just a guy that draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. We're starting out uh, looking at a 30-minute chart because I think it shows us the main features that we really need to keep in mind. To begin with, we had this um, rising green line that the market really just kind of came down to yesterday. It looked like it might want to bounce, but late in the day, pretty, you know, did, did crack through this line. But let's be honest, not by an amount that really says this is a, 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 a big deal, okay? So I kind of held off on that, um, but with the notion that if we saw more downside today, then we would likely uh, come down to this light orange line, which just so happens to... to uh, pretty much coincide for today and tomorrow with uh, roughly the same level as this horizontal line that's right around 1432. Not exactly 1432, but that's close enough for government work. So what did we see today? Well, we're going to take a little bit of a closer in view, but what we saw today was this downward momentum um, continuing through uh, pretty much the entire day, but then sideways action um, f from probably, oh, one o'clock or so on as, as the S&P just kind of kept hammering down on that 1432 level. It would pierce it just a little bit, then it would come back. Then it would hammer down on it, bounce, hammer down on it, bounce, pierce it again, then recover. So... The question we need to ask ourselves is, is pretty simple. What's going on? And I think there are a couple things that could be happening. The first thing is we could be, uh, well, the, the most bearish scenario at this point would be the S&P is in the process of making a double top. It has not broken down yet because the double top would not break down until that 1432 level is decisively taken out. And if that were to happen, then I would expect support would be roughly 32 to 35 points underneath where we close today. And that makes sense for a number of reasons. The main reason is, if we measure the height of our double top, and put it to the spot where it breaks out, if it were to break down, since this is an almost horizontal line, it doesn't matter where we put it. So we can put it here, we can put it there, we can put it here. It still points to pretty much the same thing, and then that, that minimum target is actually the low 1390s. But I want to remind you that we have a trend line that is fairly significant at about 1397, 1398, I would expect a likely bounce. So that's that's part one of the question. The the most uh, bearish scenario is is that this move continues down. We immediately discover that this is a double top, and we look out below until we get to um, about 1397, 1398. Now, what's another thing that could happen? Well, another thing that could happen is, and, and I say this uh, mainly because double tops are really not as 
common, let's put it this way, the term double top gets thrown around a lot more often than one actually sees double tops. Okay, according to uh, John McGee, double tops are pretty rare. Now, triple uh, tops are a lot more common. Uh, and a triple top really is kind of a, a variation on a head and shoulders. We've seen a lot of head and shoulders patterns, guys. And, and the last head and shoulders we had, uh, if you take a look at it, I'll see if I can do it on a daily chart here. Yeah, it, well, you're going to have to use a magnifying glass, but if you look at this head and shoulders right here, the head was capped off with a triple top. Almost a head and shoulders, but not quite. It was a little bit of a slightly irregular triple top. So if we go back to what we're looking at here, and I think an hourly view does a better job, what would happen if, let's say, now that we've broken this green line, if the market started to rally and it just kind of came back up, staying between this orange line and this green line right here, if you look at the, at the, at the, at the symmetry that that would create, it would be just about right because here's the top of the first um, the first touch, there's the second, and then the third could be, you know, somewhere down the road in, uh, say, call it two and a half weeks or so. That's a possibility. So it is possible that we get a back test of this green line more than just the little momentary bump that we saw yesterday. But as we, as we go forward, regardless whether it ends up being a double top, a triple top, regardless, this line at 1432 is very important. And if this were to turn into a, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. If this were to turn into a triple top, then that means uh, it would be confirmed by a breakdown of this level at 1432, which would then almost certainly take the markets back down to that 1397-ish level, okay? And if that happened, then we would expect a backtest to this line, and what might this whole thing end up being? You got it. Potentially, and, and again, potentially is the key word, Put that in boldface italic, potentially, yet another head and shoulders top in the S&P. But we're not there yet. Where we are right now is watching this line. This, this green line broke. That was the shot across the bow. Now we need to watch this line. It would not surprise me at all to see a rally and a return to this green line right here and if we get that that would be I think a good opportunity to lighten the load if you know what I mean so guys I think that's about oh one more thing I want to show you if we look at a five minute chart there is a little indication that uh, that we that the market may be showing us a little reason to expect a reversal here. The first thing is we, we really kind of hit down on that 1432 level fairly strongly and it didn't break. We are also trading down if we use the last one, two, three, four, five tops of the last couple of days and then the last one, two, three a little bit of a, a move underneath this line right here which I'll, I'll shed a little light on all of this looks a little wedgish and you know what wedges usually do they usually reverse so if if this holds true and we get up over this top line right here then I suspect that that will maybe put the brakes on this move 
and, and give us yet another clue that this 1432 line is going to hold on this trip down and, and that we may rally back up and, and, and try, to, try to test some of those levels and, and probably, uh, you know, test th- this broken green line that, uh, that was taken out late yesterday. The other thing I'll mention is when we were looking at our uh, green channel, here's the top line of that. I mentioned that when we got over that channel back in the middle of September, that seemed to be a little irrational exuberance, if you will. That a lot of times is the setup for the reversal of a channel. You'll get a blowout top. And then it comes back, and you can see even though we got back to uh, the low 1470s, as soon as we got up to this level, pretty sharp reversal off, off of that. So for right now, it appears that, that, that this level over that green channel may very well have been a blow-off setting up the formation of, of some pattern that will likely be a reversal. If we go back to the five-minute chart, and we look at the look at the this very small set of trend lines, you can see that today, um, and around the middle of the day, we got what may be a very, very, very slight sign of maybe. See, I'm going to say maybe two or three more times because it is such a small thing, but the fact is we. This was a little bit more selling pressure than what you would expect. It actually broke this little descending line here that le- that has lasted about three days. Could that be a sign of mild capitulation? Perhaps. But I think the more important line to watch is this one up here. If we break out over that tomorrow and then pull back and start maybe set a second high, that is higher than whatever level might be reached tomorrow, then I think I think that's a sign that 1432 on this trip down will likely hold. But if we break down through and we, and we open five points lower than where we are here, guys, this this will likely act as a double top. So we got a little bit of thinking to do here. I don't want to be too uh, swayed by the fact that the last head and shoulders top we had had a triple top at the upper portion of its head, but, you know, there's been a lot of symmetry, a lot of, quote, coincidences in the S&P over the past three and a half years. So, wouldn't surprise me. Let's just keep an eye on it together. I want to thank you for watching the video, for taking time out of your day to do so, and if you're doing this on uh, October 10th, uh, uh, I especially want to thank you for being a subscriber to sp500chart.com. If, on the other hand, you're looking at this uh, over the weekend of, uh, of uh, October 13th, then I just remind you, for less than a cheap cup of coffee per day, you could have seen this video at about, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> it's, wow throat's given out. You could have seen this video after the close on Wednesday. Maybe it would have been more relevant to you then. So just think about it. Thanks.